Hello, Norman Norwitz here. This is the kind of things we do when we don't have any mates. So today I'm going to be changing the brake pads on a 2005 Nissan, uh, sorry, a um, Mitsubishi Magnet, which is my dog's car. The uh, brakes have been a bit grindy, so they, I think they need a bit of a change. So what have I got? Uh, tools wise for this job. Well, first of all, I've got the brake pads. Alright, brake pads. Now, this is a well known uh, own make of brakes uh, from a leading um, Australian uh, distributor. Um, and and wholesaler I suppose, the wholesale as well I suppose. Now we need a uh, brake clean. Now this is from a very famous brand as well but this is their own make which is really good. This is a 400 gram tin. Certainly need lots of that. So uh, you'll need some anti-seize. I'll show you what that's for. Need some brake fluid. Make sure you get the recommended brake fluid for your type car, which this is. Uh, I've got the guys on their computers to check. Uh, I've already topped it up past the mark because I will probably uh, play it out a bit. Now I've got some marine grade grease that I had from a Bairns or trailer. This is the red stuff. This is high temperature. Because the brakes are dealing with high temperature, you need high temperature um, Grease. Now this is for the guide pins. I'll show you where the guide pins actually are. People sometimes use the silicon stuffs. They sometimes use the uh, anti-seize. I'm just never so sure whether the anti-seize is for high temperature. Um, never sure. So I'm going to put in grease. Uh, wire brush. Just hit it with everything once you've got the um, old ones out. So we'll go over to the car because I've got, oh, and you're going to need an array of spanners, sockets, um, breaker bars, etc. for the bolts that you're going to need to take off. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to jack a car up and put the, um, the jack stands on it, but that's very important. Plus, you choke the back wheels. All right, so I've got that all done. So let's go over to the car and I'll show you what I've done so far. So... Here we are at the car. Okay, as you can see, I've still got the uh, trolley jack under the car, but it's not, it's taken a little bit of strain, but not a lot. Got the axle stands, and I've got the rear wheels choked. Now, as you can see, I've turned this, so it's sitting out. So, I've, I've turned the steering wheel, so that, that, it's, that it's out towards, you can work with it, you know, straight but it's really hard to to um, get this so what I've done so far is I've slackened this bolt here and that bolt there just slacken them this one I'll have to take out and I'll grease in here this is called guide pin because that contracts with and this is the brake fluid so that puts pressure uh, on the on the um, mechanism here, the caliper, so it squashes it in, and as it as it wears down, these guide pins move. It's a very very simple mechanism. Now I'll show you the brake shoes are in there, the brake pads are, the brake pads are in there. Now this is open, so you can have a look in, and you can actually see the wear. Of the of the shoes, hey, sorry, the pads. I keep calling the shoes the pads because I'm going to do the shoes on my daughter's uh, car as well. So I've been uh, dealing with shoes, but this is pads, right? You can see the springs things on the back, all right? So when you're in here, obviously I've hit it all in there. Brake clean, the whole thing is brake clean, and obviously I have a receptacle, which is my oil catcher to um, catch all the dirt. You don't want dirt on your drive. So in effect what we're going to do is we are going to, now I've had to put a spanner on here 
and tighten that to that. All right. Now I'm not going to be able to get that out without dropping it back. So I'll drop this one up first. Well, no, I might actually drop this one down first. Do this guide pins, and then when I drop this, uh, take this one out because I'm going to take this one all out, and this will come all the way up. Then I can put put my shoes and um, my pads in there. So that's what we'll do first, and then I'll show you this in here. And then that's got a rubber little boot on it as well. I'm going to hit it with more brake clean. When you're in here as well, just check all of these and all of this, because sometimes it can get damaged. Because um, this is your brake lines with um, stone chips and whatnot, depending on where you are. A lot of the guys now are taking these out from here, in fact sometimes it's from here actually to be fair, it's from there, from up here, and replacing all of that with stainless steel. Now I've never looked into how much those are but uh, I've got a Nissan Pathfinder so, and I sometimes go, well, I do go off road but I don't go four wheel driving but I just wonder if that would be a good investment. Okay, let's get this job done. Now here we go um, back uh, at the guide pins. I was talking about the guide pins. That's the guide pin there. So that rubber boot there sits on here. So all I've done is I've taken that right out of there. Then, there are you. I can pull that rubber boot off because it just sits on a little lip there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that. I'm going to hit it with... Uh, with brake clean and I'm going to rub oops, all of this dirt off here which is there's hardly any stuff on there but it's even it's dry you see and it's dry so I'll hit that there then I'm just going to put it back and then I'm just going to put it insert it back in there with the rubber boots sitting there so the rubber boot sits between that mark there and there it just stops any rubbish from going in there but there's a bit of pressure when you push it in first because there's air trapped in here because I packed this full of uh, grease so that the rubber boot is full of grease. A bit similar to your, um, what I do with a trailer, I pack all the grease and the bearings and stuff up. Okay, so we'll do that and then we will change our Now, as you can see, I've uh, got the caliper setting up up the hill, up there. All right, so this has got to be pushed back in so that it can, because uh, obviously the new brake pads are thicker than the old ones. So that is all you do to take those ones out. In fact, they fell out. So what I would do, before you start mucking about and opening packets and stuff, I would just double check that they are a mirror image of the other one, right? So. I'm going to put that one in there, that one in there, so that come out from that side, that come out, look at the state of that, no wonder it was a bit scrapey, no pad left on that at all, so obviously around here there might be a bit of scratches, that one's nice and smooth, but around here it is a little bit scrapey, that probably should be changed. But I'm not going to change that today. Let's get a brakes on and let's get our driving. Okay, so pretty much I'm just going to put that back in there. That's all it is. But what I'm going to do first is, with my anti seize I'm going to put anti seize down here. It's not on here, but on there and on here. And then I'm going to put anti seize on the back. Then we're going to bring push this, push this in. I'll come back to you when I do that. So, what I've done here, is I've actually put the new ones in, and all I'll do is I'll get my paste, and paste the back of there, and the back of here, just so that it's it's free on here. Now this is uh, an old silicon gun I've cut down, and I meant to cut that bit off there to let it in. But that just, with the old brake, you squeeze it up and you push, the um, brake cylinder uh, back. Now it's under pressure because it's done with the brake fluid. 
but remember and take your brake fluid reservoir cap off and that just relieves pressure. So pretty much what I've done is, and you'll see me just push that back ever so slightly, because the reason I've got to push this back, and it only goes back to the rubber, which is there, it's very, it might be hard to see, but don't squash that through. It's very important that you clean as much as you can around because you don't want to be putting uh, debris into there. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of urgency on this because it's starting to rain, I've got to do it the other side. But pretty much, I'm just going to put this back down, not like that, and uh, bolt everything up. So that's the finished article. Brought this down. As you can see, I've greased up the, um, the plates here so it, it's uh, the anti-seize. Now there's two springs here that I forgot to talk about in there. Make sure they're both against here and here underneath. So that pushes it in towards the, um, the rower. But just uh, tighten one against the other. This is the one, this whole thing will move. Like I say, greased it up, tighten it up. You have to put a 70 mil spanner, well, I had a 70 mil spanner here, 50 mil socket, and did that up. Pretty much done. And that's exactly the same for the other side. Hello, I'm just back from a test drive. Uh, after putting everything back together, very, very important that you uh, bend the brakes in. Now they say, or I've heard it said that you should drive it in reverse and brake and it will then put the caliper back to the correct setting. Now, I don't know why that is. I was doing it forward and reverse but very slow, making sure that everything is okay. Um, went down the bottom of the road and I checked that the reservoir was actually at the correct setting at the correct level and it was fine absolutely fine had a look underneath no leaks but just doing this job you should make sure that um, obviously when you're finished you make sure that you put the wheels on and the, the nuts are tight um, very careful taking it off the axle stands you know safety 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 really because um, I used to drive government four-wheel drives, <coughs> and those things are five ton. You don't want um, them falling on top of you. You don't want a car falling on top of you, because it's at least a ton and a half. Um, we used to be told to put the wheel under the, um, the car when we jack it up. But if you've got it on axle stands, and you leave the jacks under the car, you're going to be fine. But doing your brakes... Uh, particularly your front brakes, probably your back brakes as well, but more your front brakes because you've got to twist the steering. I would have both uh, wheels jacked up and both wheels off the car so you can pivot the wheel. And uh, you do one side and then do the other side. They're both exactly the same. But it was ridiculously easy. Um, um, what did I... I didn't have really any major problems at all. Um, I went through a whole uh, tin of and a little bit of this one of brake clean because when you're in there it is very messy. I hit everything with heavy duty um, um, cleaner uh, degreaser after just to make sure that there was nothing, no brake fluid and stuff because you don't want to brake fluid and stuff on your, on your uh, car. Uh, particularly on your paint and stuff. So I hit all the engine bay, not inside where my wheels are. Um, but that's pretty much it. Like, like say, these are a well-known manufacturer's own brand of brakes. Um, and I would think in Australia there's probably only about probably three manufacturers, maybe two manufacturer brakes anyway. So they're probably going to be done may be made in that uh, factories so uh, that's probably all I should say but very easy uh, Norman no mates signing off till the next time
Bye for now.